Thank you so much. I'm touched. Um, I'm currently in Tel Aviv, um, which is a very complicated place to be at the moment. And um, we're dealing with complicated issues. And what I thought will be relevant for all of us um, at this point in time is to, um, to have a little bit of an optimistic talk um, with you all. And what I chose to examine is women, peace and security and representation in public sphere, which is extremely uh, politicized and uh, pessimistic. And what I chose to concentrate my 20 minutes on is positive development and a little bit of visual manifestation of change. Because I think that we should, when we're talking about women, peace and security critically, which is very important, and I will because this is my profession, um, we always need to measure what we uh, achieved and how much, um, how much um, everything changed in the last 20 years. And this is what I would like to touch upon. Um, and I'm going to start with an um, enormous sculpture that is now put in Latvia, um, in, in a main square, it's a medical profession female who is welcoming the sick and the people who need protection by medical uh, professions into a hospital. And when we're talking about public space, especially sculptures in public space, what I will concentrate on today, we um, oftentimes asking questions of what we would like to commemorate or what is important in our, in our discourse. How would we like to remember or to, to um, make visible of certain um, topics? And this is one that I think is important. But we, before we're touching on positive solutions and development, I would like to share a little bit of where I'm from. And if you join my gender tours, um, you will start right here. This is the Tel Aviv uh, Museum of Art. It's a contemporary uh, art museum. To my right, if I stand in front of the museum, I'll find the, the Tel Aviv court. To my left, the, the municipal library and the and the theater, and behind me, an enormous or the main military base of of Israel, where decisions are made without women, um, on behalf of women, on women, but with no real representation. Um, and in the center, we have um, a huge, probably four meter. Um, long sculpture of, um, of a woman line. It's a Henry Mou from uh, 1970, and it's called a nude line. Uh, and I'll take you through what I see. So she is lifting her pelvis. Do you see her pelvis lifted? Um, spreading her legs, she's naked. She has the, the um, her bone here coming out and her breast, she's lying on her head. And what she doesn't have is a name or a context or a head. So we have a woman who is just, that is just a body of a woman without any name or context or a head. And I, I'm looking at, at this sculpture as an educational text. I would like to read it critically as a text. And what do I learn every day when I cross by this sculpture? And every day I'm thinking, am I beautiful enough to go and teach in university? Am I impressive enough? Am I thin enough? Am I taking enough space? What is my role? Do, does it matter what I say if women in my space don't have names? Right in front of her, she has three sculptures of only men with only hats. And we'll see in art, at least in Tel Aviv, but I'll show you around the world. We, uh, part of the Zoom magic is that we're gonna go into a virtual tour around the world, is that men is represented by a head. And when they have body, it's an active body of a warrior. 
we know we all know the the man with the sword on a horse which i'm not going to show you but i'm going to show you a little bit of men images and how active they are and women are oftentimes are passive headless nameless and just like um just uh, to resonate uh, Hillary's fantastic analysis, they're always needy. They're in a role of, um, of health. They're together with their children. So it's one word, women and children. We're gonna see it a little bit, and then we're gonna look at, um, at alternatives. So just a little bit of context, Gorilla Girls, um, created an art piece in front of the Metropolitan Museum um, in 85, asking, do women have to be naked to get into the Metropolitan Museum? And the answer that less than 5% of the artists in modern art are women, but 85% of the nudes are female. And we'll see that uh, around the world, about 85 of the images that are in public spaces, paid by public money, means your tax money, um, are naked and headless. Um, and I'm gonna ask a little bit of questions about that. And we're gonna look at how this transformed in the last four months. So this is my least favorite art piece in the world. It's not true, but for the sake of the argument, it's a Rami Meiri's city wall painting um, that portray men or teenagers looking at women's showers. And it's um, next, to a, next to a beach called Peeking Into Showers. And those are the women and girls showers. And for a decade or so, feminist organizations and individuals created all kinds of interventions, calling it rape culture, um, asking women and teenagers to put the name of the rapist on as a graffiti on the painting, which they did. And um, about two and a half months ago, the municipality of Tel Aviv decided to erase um, this painting when men groups are, are, are crying and whining, saying that you can't present anything anymore, you can't talk, you can't heat on women, you can't be funny anymore. But they decided to erase it officially after a very long, a decade long struggle of feminist organization, um, graffiti on that and the municipality erased the graffiti and kept um, the painting. And it's part of a phenomenon that, that is happening in the last five months. And this is where I'm um, hopeful that coronavirus increasing activism in, among women group and changing a little bit the, the public sphere um, norms. So let's look at the norms before, um, before the last six months. In Central Park, uh, Prague, in uh, Czech Republic, we have a woman in a very subordinated position. She's naked. It's a modern um, uh, sculpture. Um, she's submissive um, in the middle of the street. What do I learn when I cross by her? What images come to my mind? I'm thinking of police brutality, but also on sadomasochistic sex and subordination of women. She, she looks almost like a UN brochure that, um, or a website that Hillary uh, mentioned, how a, a woman from the global south should look like when she's being helped by a brave soldier, either male or female. This is sculpture by Dan, Dan Harris, and it looks like a, traditional, um, maybe Renaissance sculpture, but it was uh, positioned, it was made and positioned in uh, 2019. And we see again, um, like 85% of the women sculptures in public spaces, a woman who is naked spreading her legs, her breast is perfect, she's very young and she doesn't have a name or a face or a context. She's just lying there waiting to decorate our space and to be sexy as a social or, or as a sexual price for the heroes. If 
women are presented somewhat active in public spaces is normally as mothers. So women position in, in, in public sphere is oftentimes as a decorative um, sculpture, very passive or as a mother. This woman is breastfeeding in South Korea and she's very happy to breastfeed. And this is the reason why she's naked. This is the reason why she's there. And we're learning that breastfeeding is making women happy, which it which is and very healthy, uh, but is this the only um, position I want to see women in? When we look at naked men in art, um, I brought three um, three examples from New York, Florence, and and Paris. The pursuits of the head of the Medusa. We see that women are very men are very active while they're. Um, while they're naked in public sphere. Um, the story is that a smart woman, my story is that a smart woman resisted um, rape and abuse by military. And as a punishment, um, her head was uh, cut off, she was beheaded. And the sculpture appear in a lot of European capitals in public spaces where men are naked and, and, and the, 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 their body is a spectacle of war, while her body is a, a spectacle of the ultimate enemy that, and defeat. And after we, um, we looked at a little bit what's, what's the norm, what's the 85% that is happening in, in all over the world, I would like to look at some alternatives that appeared in the last four or five months. Rosalie was um, was a slave who, in the Caribbean, um, she was owned by a man who raped her. He forced her to to have sex with his friends, and she got pregnant. And while she got pregnant, she got angrier and angrier and she resisted and she freed um, some of the female and male slaves that came with the ship to the Caribbeans, burned the, the ships and um, started a, a revolution or started a rebellion acts against her, the person who thought is her master. And she was caught by soldiers while she was pregnant with this man, uh, from this man. And she was kept in prison till she gave birth to his son because the son is his. Um, and then she, was, um, uh, then she was killed as a capital punishment in a very big public humiliation. And um, nearly 150 years later, um, to oh, nearly 200 years later, her uh, sculpture was uh, put in Paris last month to commemorate her heroic act. And a fe black female slave who, who rebel against the colonialist and hegemonic power. It was shocking to me to realize that she's the first black woman sculpture in Paris which is unbelievable uh, for, for a colonialist country like France and sort of progressive discourse that they're having within the feminist discourse. So it was put um, five weeks ago in Paris. Another phenomenon that happened that I would like to touch on is sculpture that represent hegemonic male power of colonialist. Edward Colston was a, um, was a slave owner and, and trafficker. Um, he was a thief who, who um, conquered um, people's uh, countries and states and areas and stole a lot of their goods, but also cultural heritage and brought it to the Bristol Museum. And in June, 2020, a group of uh, Black Lives Matter activists um, took off his sculptures, 
um, this is where um, stood on it a little bit as an act of humiliation and threw him to the river. And the interesting part is not what they did to him, but what they put instead of him. This is where I want to touch on alternatives and how much I think the manifestation of change is visible in front of our eyes. The world is changing. 1325, representation and, and integration of women from diverse group of uh, people into public discourse is, is just here. And, um, and uh, Jane Reed, together with Mark Quinn, created uh, Jane Reed's sculptures, standing with her black fist, um, having her natural hair with her uh, contemporary dress and tights. Um, she was melted from a bronze that is um, super dark as a request because she wanted to have the darkest version of herself in public space, um, taking his place, taking uh, Colton's place in Bristol. And the municipality of Bristol wasn't sure what to do with it. First, they brought the police and they um, were very violent towards the demonstrators. Then they took the sculpture off and threw it to the garbage. And uh, Black Lives Matter hired, uh, rented a, a truck and put it back and the municipality took it off. And now it's back on as part of a struggle of the public space. But for me, as also a, a symbol of women taking their space in, in, the, in, the, in the public sphere. Um, that's Bristol um, in June. In July, the municipality of London decided to take off by themselves their own initiative, Robert Melligan uh, sculptures from the public sphere and put it in some basement. Robert Melligan is a colonialist, is a, a trade, uh, he traded slaves and trafficked people across the Atlantic and into Europe. Um, and he also filled the British Museum with treasures. Um, different activists tried to um, intervene with his sculpture. And then and the municipality decided that before he's being thrown to the river, they're going to take him down and nothing is replacing him yet. But Paris put Rosalie on the podium instead of another colonialist. So we'll see what happens there. And I think this is the time if you're um, if you have time and energy to to write a letter to the municipality of London and suggest what can replace this the, uh, his um, sculpture. Um, same phenomenon is happening in Copenhagen a decade before, because it's in Scandinavia, Mary Thompson was presented instead of, um, of a colonialist symbol um, in, in, um, in the port where she's welcoming the ships coming from all over the world. She's wearing a slave dress. On one hand, she's holding a torch a symbol of a rebellion or, or a resistance. And on the other hand, she's holding a, an African symbol of uh, royalty and decision-making. And this is, um, and this is uh, Dunita Donaldson. Uh, Dunita Donaldson was a um, Holocaust survivor living in Sweden. And when she saw, um, and when she saw neo Nazis marching the street, um, she couldn't. She, she was very angry, and she uh, wanted to intervene. And the only thing that came to her mind later, she talks about it, is that she took her purse and she hit them with her purse, and they got and she started to scream at them, and they got scared and ran away. And it's a long story because she was criticized heavily and then the municipality was criticized for standing um, and, uh, and supporting her. 
and and then she um, and and the municipality of this town it's a very small town in southern Sweden decided to commemorate her and put a symbol or a sculpture of Dunita Danielsson in the main square and it's the only sculpture I know of an angry woman women are oftentimes passive or very beautiful or laughing or being an amazing mother, but they're never ever angry. And, and Dunita Donaldson's sculpture is somewhat angry and she's beating the neo-Nazis and the neo-Nazis are not in the, in the sculpture. And I think it's important because we oftentimes have hegemonic male militaristic power in sculptures and suddenly it's um, changing. A um, few more. A few years ago, um, Kristen uh, Wiebel put uh, a picture or a sculpture of a fearless girl in New York in front of the bull in Wall Street as a symbol of women's resistance and girl resistance. Um, and look how active she is and the power she has in her feast, putting them on, on her, um, on her um, um, uh, waist. And other pictures, um, I'm running out of time. So other pictures, uh, other sculptures that are um, put recently in the last two months in New York in Central Park, women actually talking to each other, which is nearly unheard of um, in uh, before, but like a, a year ago. And um, one of my ultimate favorite right now, um, a sculpture called Reaching Out um, of a black girl with a natural hair and um, authentic clothes of a teenager playing with her phone in a park. And we don't have images of women just doing something, being busy, sending a text, listening to a lecture. And I wanna finish again with the um, with the Latvian sculpture of the health worker because I think it symbolizes. I'm doing a lot of deconstruction of public space and how women are not represented in public space and how women from diverse groups are hardly ever represented and that women are there, men are there to uh, protect and defend women. And, and this is what is being commemorated while women are there to be a sexual price for them. And I think this culture started a phenomenon that, that uh, constructs something different. Women who are professional, who are loving and caring. For me, this is women, peace and security. This health worker who is um, keeping me secure and safe much more than a military man who is there with his sword or with his weapon or with his um, tank. And, and I would like to finish with that. And if you would like to discuss or think to yourself, I would like you to think of your, on your surrounding, on your main square. What is the name of the square? What is the name of your street? At least in Tel Aviv, where I live, 3% of the streets are after women and 97% are after men. Um, women are not presented, but it's shifting and changing. So how would you like to see your main square? What would you like to see there? And um, I would like to see this, my Angelo square, uh, just like in San Francisco. So this is what I had for you today.